Stop, we've already seen this video. Yes, in my last video on YouTube, for those who could only spend three days in Paris, I provided the most practical and complete itinerary that as an insider I could think of. In three days, nearly all the major musts of the City of Light, most of the essential neighborhoods have been covered. Yet, there are a few other sites that cannot be overlooked. And all we need is two more days so as to complete a longer five-day Paris Essential itinerary. As we've already seen the first three days in Paris Express, here are the last two days of the Paris Essential five-day itinerary. So, for day four, we're leaving Paris. The Palace of Versailles awaits us. After a good night's sleep, have breakfast at the hotel and be ready to leave at 8.30 a.m. There are many different ways to get to Versailles, where we'll visit the palace this morning. Should you prefer it, depending on where you take it from and on the traffic, a taxi would cost in between 35 and 55 euro. There are also three train options to choose from depending on where you are staying in Paris. If you are staying near the Opera, this train, regional train line L, goes from Gare Saint-Lazare to Versailles Rive Droite station. It takes 35 minutes and costs 4 euro 95. When in Versailles, you'll have to walk 20 minutes to the palace. The second train option is regional train line N from Gare Montparnasse to Versailles Chantier station. It takes 25 minutes and costs 4 euro 5, but you still have a long 1.5 kilometer or 25 minutes walk to the palace. The best solution by train is the RERC, which links seven stations in Paris to Versailles Château Rive Gauche, the nearest station to the Palace of Versailles. It takes 25 to 43 minutes depending on where you board it and costs 4 euro 5. From Versailles Château Rive Gauche, the walk is then only 11 minutes. There are three main things to discover at the Palace of Versailles. The palace in itself, the gardens and the estate of Trianon. The gardens are free and open every day from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., 8.30 p.m. in high season. The palace is open every day except Mondays from 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m., 6.30 p.m. in high season. Access to the palace is free for visitors under 18 or under 26 residing in the EU and 18 euro for the others. And to access the palace, booking a time slot online is mandatory for all. Here is the URL for this. There, you can also book one of the many different guided tours depending on the day you want to go to the palace. Only one of these tours is in English though, the guided tour of the King's private apartment for 10 euro. Audio guides are available for free in 11 languages, French, English, German, Spanish, Italian, Russian, Mandarin Chinese, Japanese, Portuguese, Korean and Polish. You can also enjoy audio guide tracks on your smartphone and not queue at the audio guide desk by downloading for free the Palace's applications, available in English, Spanish and French. Plan for two hours to explore the beautiful rooms inside the Palace of Versailles and make sure to leave an extra hour to enjoy the awesome gardens outside. These are nice evening views, but when you're out of the Palace of Versailles, it should be around 12.30 a.m. 1 p.m. When walking back from the Palace to the Versailles Chateau RERC station, stop at Rue de Satory on your right. There are many interesting restaurant options here for a quick or not so quick lunch. And then when your lunch is over, from the Versailles Chateau train station, take RERC to Musée d'Orsay. Since 1986, the imposing nave of the former Orsay train station has served as the setting for this museum, whose superb collections of sculptures and paintings cover the periods from 1848 to 1914, the Louvre being dedicated to what came before. 
The entry cost is 16 euro and it's free if you're under 18 or under 26 and member of the EU. It took only two years to build this amazing building in 1900 to be the train station serving the entire southwest of France. After World War II, too small for the longer trains, it declined and was finally transformed into a museum in the 80s. Let's grab a map. It covers less than one century of art, so it is clearly not as huge as the Louvre. Consider staying here between two and three hours to visit it. There are superb works of art everywhere, but if you are in a hurry, the fifth level is where the most masterpieces can be found. Still, on the ground floor, there are some very interesting rooms. We are now on the fifth level. This place with the clock on its view of Paris is a famous Instagram spot. People line up to take a picture. Back to paintings with this Déjeuner sur l'herbe from Edouard Manet. Dance is a subject that marks Degas' career. He is in awe of these dancers who shine on the stage. He has done many dancers' paintings. This sun breaking through the fog at the London Parliament House is one of my favorite Monet's painting. It's difficult to get in front of what is perhaps my favorite painting ever, The Starry Night by Vincent van Gogh. The museum closes at 6 p.m. 2.5 hours is a good timing to discover all the beauties of Musée d'Orsay. Let's take the Aria C up to Saint-Michel Notre-Dame station and then switch to Aria B to Châtelet Les Halles. Just above the Châtelet Les Halles station, the biggest transport hub in Paris, is the Forum des Halles Mall, the largest inside Paris. With 50 million visitors a year, it's the most visited in France. It's a good time to do some shopping. When you exit the mall via the Porte de Saint-Eustache, you are facing the beautiful Saint-Eustache church. And you are at the south end of our last visit today, the awesome Rue Montorgueil, one of Paris' most beautiful pedestrian streets. Rue Montorgueil is full of shops, cafes and restaurants where Parisians socialize while doing their daily shopping.
There are dozens of restaurants and cafes in Rue Montorgueil, of any kind. Among all those restaurants, the most famous is definitely L'Escargot de Montorgueil. If ever you want to try eating snails à la française, that's the place to go. Rue Montorgueil is the longest pedestrian street in Paris, with 360 meters or 0.22 miles. We are approaching the end of Rue Montorgueil now. Have you found the restaurant for your dinner tonight? I would personally recommend Braise Café for good crepes, the Brasserie Les Petits Carreaux, Bolinen for good Indian food, Le Compa, a typical bistro, and of course, L'Escargot Montorgueil, though it's quite expensive. When you finish eating, it's time to go back to your hotel. You're just three stops away on line three from the opera. What an enriching and captivating full day journey we've experienced. Here are the places we will visit on our last day in Paris. Once again, breakfast at the hotel, let's leave at 8.30 am. At the Opera metro station, take line 8 to La Tour Maubourg, and from there, walk to the Hotel des Invalides. You will enter the Invalides by the Cour d'honneur. This court of honor is used to pay tribute to soldiers killed in operations and for military ceremonies. At Les Invalides, you can visit the Museum of the French Army, as well as the Museum of Plan Relief, a very interesting museum of military models. Among the many rooms of the Army Museum, the medieval room is, in my opinion, the most interesting. If the Museum of the French Army is interesting, the main reason to visit Les Invalides, though, is this dome. Prime example of French Baroque architecture, at 107 meters high, the dome is more a mausoleum than a church. The French Emperor Napoleon was entombed under the dome of the Invalides with great ceremony in 1840. This is the entrance of the crypt where the sarcophagus of Napoleon is to be found. This sarcophagus in quartzite contains five coffins, one made of tin, one in mahogany wood, two of lead, one in ebony wood, heated into each other around Napoleon's remains. Napoleon's only son is also buried in the crypt. Now, just a short walk to the Rodin Museum. The Musée Rodin is primarily dedicated to the works of the French sculptor Auguste Rodin, who is generally considered to be the founder of modern sculpture. Rodin's masterpiece, The Thinker, 
is exposed in the garden of the museum right by the entrance. Whether you find yourself within the private mansion generously donated to the French state by Rodin, or strolling through the delightful garden, if sculpture is your passion, you are sure to be captivated. Now let's walk to the nearby Varennes metro station, take line 13 to Duroc and then line 10 to Mabillon. We are just a few meters from the Marché Saint-Germain, where you will be able to purchase all you need for a good picnic at the nearby Jardin du Luxembourg. And if the weather does not avail, you can even grab a bite to eat inside the market. A brief stroll, taking you past the charming Théâtre de l'Odéon, leads you to the Jardin du Luxembourg. One of the largest and certainly of the prettiest parks in Paris, the Jardin du Luxembourg is a perfect spot to chill. As you can see, there are plenty of seating options, and you can even lie down on the grass if you want. From there, we are not far from the Panthéon, and that's where we're going now. Majestically perched on the hill of saint Geneviève. The Panthéon is a true marvel of neoclassical architecture. Originally built as a church, it now serves as a mausoleum and final resting place for many illustrious figures of French history. Under the Grand Dome lies an ever-moving sphere, the Foucault Pendulum, suspended from the ceiling. It's a mesmerizing demonstration of the Earth's rotation as it swings back and forth, showcasing the rotation of the Earth beneath it. If you are ready to climb 203 steps, there is a great view waiting for you at the top of the dome. From there, visitors are rewarded with a breathtaking panoramic view of Paris, where iconic landmarks such as the Eiffel Tower, Notre Dame Cathedral and the River Seine paint a charming yet ever-changing picture of the City of Light. Beneath the Pantheon lies an underground mausoleum, a final resting place for notable figures including Voltaire, Rousseau, Victor Hugo and Marie Curie, creating a solemn space that honors the intellectual and cultural legacy of France. There are 81 individuals resting here, the last one being buried here being Josephine Baker in 2021. Just behind the Pantheon is another beautiful church, saint etienne du mont This architectural masterpiece combines elements of both Gothic and Renaissance styles, captivating visitors with its intricate carvings and stunning stained glass windows. But the church is best known for its 16th century jubé or rood screen. Real stone lace, it's the only one like this in Paris. The church also contains the tombs of dramatist Jean Racine and mathematicians Blaise Pascal. 
But what makes this church so unique is that it houses the shrine of Saint Geneviève, the patron saint of Paris. The next stage of our stroll will have us go deep in the Latin Quarter, down to the famous library Shakespeare and Company. Place de la Sorbonne is a beautiful square, surrounded by historic buildings, including the prestigious Sorbonne University. Opposite this crossroads is the Musée de Cluny. The garden in front of the Musée de Cluny is called Samuel Paty. He was a history teacher in secondary school who was beheaded in an Islamic terror attack in 2020. The Musée de Cluny is a museum of medieval art. Its building combines Roman era termae, the term de Cluny, including a well-preserved frigidarium and the 15th century Hôtel de Cluny. There are around 23,000 artifacts in the museum dating from the Gallo-Roman period up until the 16th century. If the Louvre has its Mona Lisa, the Cluny Museum has the Lady and the Unicorn. This invaluable series of six 16th century tapestries is exhibited in a room with suitable lighting so as not to damage them. Continuing our stroll to the border of the Seine, let's make a stop at Odette. Here, you can get the best choux à la crème or cream puffs in Paris. I couldn't resist. I love Odette's choux à la crème. You have a great view on Notre Dame here. In the small garden in front of us is the oldest tree in Paris, a locust tree planted in 1602. No, all these people in line are not here to see the tree. They are patiently waiting to enter one of the most famous English bookshop, Shakespeare and Company. It's nearly tea time. What about a short pause at their cafe? The last part of our stroll today is short, but we will see some of the most beautiful stained glass windows in Paris, a great pedestrian street, and the evil defeated. Here is saint Severin Church. Built between the 13th and 17th century in flamboyant Gothic style, saint Severin is one of the oldest churches on the left bank. Most of the stained glass dates from the late 15th century. But superb windows illustrating the seven sacraments created by Jean Bazin illuminates the apse chapels. These stained glass windows are for me as beautiful as those of the Saint Chapelle. Rue de la Huchette is the next stage of our stroll. It's a pedestrian street parallel to the river, famous for its theaters, jazz clubs and Greek restaurants. Le Caveau de la Huchette, for example, is the most famous jazz club in Paris. The monumental Fontaine Saint-Michel is located in Place Saint-Michel, just near the Seine River. It features the Archangel Michael wrestling with the devil. And this is it. Go back early to your hotel to pack your luggage. And no special advice for a restaurant tonight. It's up to you. This map shows it. With my 5-day essential Paris itinerary, you will have visited all major sites in Paris and enjoyed great French food at the same time. Thanks for watching.